Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You've got the best, you've got them for a rip. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello oh, again, it is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength talk and sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have chosen to spend some time and join us. Erin Evernham, bless her heart... <laughs> Erin's got a rough life, you know. She <laughs> spent this past weekend in Amelia Island at the Concorde d'Elegance. I like I how you said that. Yes. Very fancy, Oh, I'm Steve. real fancy. <laughs> oh, nothing says fancy more than the postman. I mean, you ju- I ooze fancy sometimes. Yes, Just yes. Well, I ooze something. I don't know what it is. Uh, honoring Roger Penske. <laughs> Yes, I don't the, the fun thing about, oh, by the way, that's Ashley Strumming <laughs> hey guys. that you hear, uh, the other voice, Ashley Fillett, and Ashley is the co-host of our MAV TV show every Saturday morning on MAV TV, 7.30 and 10.30 Eastern Time. Right. Anyhow, but uh, what's always fun about this is that because of all of the, the ties, like Roger Penske, Aaron will come back next week. With all these great stories, like I talked to Al Unser Jr. Yes. And he talked about sprint cars in the in the seventies, you know, and uh, it ties in so well with sprint car racing. Um, actually, on Motor Racing Network, Rusty Wallace is our guest analyst, mm-hmm. and so he went to the Amelia Island thing, okay. and then he flew to Phoenix. And he said Ray actually hosted a a a Q and A session with Roger and a whole bunch of people. Rusty was part of it, and he said the stories. Yes. We're unreal. Yes. So Aaron is not here, but Ashley is yeah. here. How are you? I'm great. And and just to nudge on Roger Penske a little bit, we David obviously raced That's for right. Roger David at one Roger. point. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh we got to go to his um oh, celebrate the anniversary. Yeah. I forget what year it was. Yeah. That's awful. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, we got to go to that dinner and just to see all the drivers that he's helped over the years all on stage together is, is pretty phenomenal. It really yeah. is. It really is. Roger Penske is uh well, he's Roger Penske. Yes. I don't even think <laughs> uh, I think I think that almost diminishes the word icon in the sport, you know. I mean, Roger Penske's a Roger Penske, you know. So, uh, great, great stuff. Hey, let's get to it. Our classic screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Uh, the main racing was in Pennsylvania and California. Um, Ashley, of course, her home track is the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. She's from, she's not the man from Mifflin Town. She's the girl from just down the road from Port Royal Speedway. That's right. Um, but, um, uh, the racing was great, but I am telling you, opening day at Port Royal, uh, they put some some bodies in that joint. Holy moly. What they've been doing there is absolutely incredible. We've been talking about yeah. it for years now. Um, but I found out from a little birdie that they also increased the tow on opening day because they had so many cars in the pits and so many fans in the stands that they increased the tow money by $50 for each guy who didn't make the race. Nice. That is really cool. Uh, really, really neat stuff. I, I saw uh, you know, Twitter nonsense about uh, the, <laughs> the uh, it was boasting about the purse at Port Royal and saying, ah, oh, ABC, you should do this, and if this track did this and that track. I, I don't like the calling other tracks out. Every track is an independent business sure. that has to do what they have to do. Every track promoter I know wishes they could pay $10,000 to win on a regular Friday night show, okay? But uh, but it does speak well for the person at Port Royal because they were using it as bragging about other series and <laughs> tracks and people should do setting this. Setting the bar. So Somebody always has bar. to set it. Absolutely, and they certainly do. And when it came down to track racing action, Corey Eliason set the bar pretty high scoring his first win we're going to chat with Corey in a little bit i was really excited while well, i'm excited for Corey, and he is just a great racer uh equally as excited for brent marks new opportunity this year uh barry jackson the cjb team they're going to run a uh an open schedule if you will and in complete candor and honesty they went to volusia and really struggled yes. uh of course brent and port royal are pretty good together mm-hmm. so you got to go a little home <laughs> cook in there um but to see him finish second and then logan wagner the zemco car uh big shocking news he's good at port royal um link, yeah exactly Track champion what two three years yeah, no, he's just he's just he's logan wagner he's doing logan wagner type things uh the fabulous lincoln speedway it was the ramers in the dietrich now this is fascinating to me okay brandon Raymer won freddie Raymer finished second brothers billy dietrich finished third and danny dietrich finished fourth but ashley and we were talking about this earlier in the week 
this is this is not to diminish Brandon or Billy. Correct. They are both great racers. Yes. But when you look at track records and history, Freddie and Danny have certainly had a little bit more on-track success, yet they were second to their brothers. Uh, and I love that. I love that because Brandon, like I said, Brandon and Billy Dietrich are two just great guys, and it's good to see them have success and run with their brothers as well. Well, and that's always that little extra elbow in the yeah. ribcage to their brother, you know, when they yeah. get that opportunity to to brag a little bit yeah, as well. Sure. absolutely. So great stuff. I saw a lot of pictures of, uh, you know, Fred is Fred in victory lane, but uh, Deb was the word <laughs> glowing. Uh, that's a proud mama right there. And I guess the, the, the and, and Brandon and Freddie, and I know a lot of you Sprint Car fans know it, are triplets uh, with Chessie, and she was actually yes. there as well. So the whole family was there. That's the really boys cool. got one too. And so uh, Mama Deb was just in, uh, she could not have been more in proud mama mode. We need to maybe sit down, Mr. Dietrich and Mr. Raymer. To oh, kind of have a well, that's true. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> but to have a father what, a battle royale. A, a <laughs> I didn't brawl? think about that. Okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> they hate it. I mean, Fred, well, no, Mister. Oh, you're talking Dan Dietrich. Yes. Okay, that oh, might man. work. The oh, Misters. Like, no, the, I'm looking like Danny, patriarchs. Danny Dietrich, and Fred. No, no that's not no, going to work. Gonna at all. No, that's no. not going to work. Dan at all. and Fred no, sit that. those two down to talk about more of a father figure oh. influence in the racing world. With their boys I like the both way you, running. I, I like the way you, we sat down, and it's on YouTube right now. You can mm-hmm. go to our YouTube page, Fred, Brandon, and Freddie. Right. Sat down with them last year at Port Royal, and just fascinating to see Dad Fred Raymer versus the Fred Raymer that many of you loved and many of you booed, um, <laughs> and continue to dis. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, you know, Fred's one of Fred, Fred was one of those guys. He was one of those guys that when the posse versus the outlaw, he had a fair number of people that were fans of his only four nights a year. <laughs> you know, the rest of the time they wanted nothing to do with him. But, uh, you know, so, true. Uh, so that's I, I love that Brandon Raymer picked up the win. Uh, Freddie, uh, Billy Dietrich got the better of his brother, Danny. I mean, I just I, I like that. I think that's yes. really, really neat. Bodes well for the whole families, Absolutely. actually. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. Man, this I, I'm so jacked up about what's going on here. Brad Sweet won at Merced. Andy Forsberg, we're going to talk to Andy. Their California swing. They got rained out at Petaluma, which is the track I really wanted to see them on. But uh, I'm telling you, uh, ASCS really doing well. I think they had, I think the lowest car count they've had, they had two Arizona races and two California races. The lowest car count is 46 cars. They were above 50, I think, everywhere else. Um, They are off to a great, great start. And how about this? USCS breaking news. (laughs) Breaking news. We don't have one of those fancy sounders. We never do this. We need to get one of those (laughs) fancy sounders. So breaking news, Mark Smith lost a race. Uh, yeah, he had How won like. How many times do we announce that somebody yeah, has lost? I know. Already? Okay, well, okay. Now let's not feel bad for Mark here. Okay, it was Chatham, Louisiana, Friday night. Dale Howard ended Mark Smith's eight race win streak. Mark Smith finished second, and what kind of chassis was Dale Howard driving? <laughs> A Mach one. one chassis that Mark Smith built. Uh, so Still Mark Smith out. Mach one chassis won again. If you uh, can't win there, you want your customer, you want your customer to, win. to do it. You, exactly. You know. know that. You know that. You guys built chassis. Uh, and by the way, Saturday night breaking news: Mark. Smith Smith won again. Okay, so there you have it. Our classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Classic ink screen printing and embroidery is offering full custom drive repair and crew wear options. And Ashley Stremme, you are a customer of theirs with your lethal chassis business. Yes, we sure do. They offer full service embroidery department specializing in headwear and outerwear. Um, Experienced design team. I know I'm a little bit nitpicky with things, so Uh they're awesome to work with. Um, Dedicated sales department. And they're not just in racing. Local businesses, school districts, sports teams, you name it. Check them out. It. Absolutely. <laughs> ClassicIncUSA.com. ClassicIncUSA.com. All right. Now, we talked about the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. Let's talk about Brandon Raymer going for the lead and the win. Brandon took the lead. He passed Billy Dietrich. This is Wayne Harper with Speed Shift TV. It's our Dry Dean Diesel all deftifying move of the week. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. So, a battle for the lead with lap traffic in front. New leader, Brandon Raymer, gets by Billy Dietrich and grabs the race lead. That Death Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information.
And there you have it. That sounded really good. Of course, Wayne Harper, our buddy there with the call on that. Dryden's new DRF Racing Oils, uh, proven on the track with drivers and cars celebrating in victory lane, and now they're ready for your racing engine. DRF engineered exclusively for high-performance racing engines that require maximum performance against the toughest competition. Ashley? All DRF racing and break-in oils built with competition-grade ZDDP to protect critical engine components while boasting improved torque and horsepower and superior temperature reduction. Want the same winning performance and engine protection? Go to drfracing.com and start using DRF in your next race. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I jumped all over <laughs> you there. Dryden's DRF yeah, yeah, Racing yeah. Oil, the official racing oil of the world of outlaws. I'll see that exactly. So there you have it. It is really, really neat. We love our friends at Dryden. You know, one of the things is we've talked about a lot of times here, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit, the technology in racing, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, we now have monitors that go to lap times and scoring, right. race mm-hmm. monitor and, and my race pass and and those type of things. And I love the technology. Well, our friends at Sage Fruit have added that technology now. What? Just last week. Listen to this. You can punch in your location and find the nearest store that has Sage oh, Fruit fruit. That's cool. Now, isn't that cool? I was in Atlanta, or I was in uh, Phoenix, mm-hmm. okay, and found where the Sage Fruit was out there. Really? Okay. I'm going to Syracuse, and the price choppers in Syracuse this weekend have. Sage Fruit. So just go to Sage Fruit and find their store locator or complain to your local store. But isn't that really cool? That is neat. I didn't know there was, is it, what is it? Is it Sage Fruit app? Like, yeah, it's, what? Like, it's like an app. It's okay. a part of their website or you can do it right on your phone. Cool. And just punch in your location or a zip code or a city nice. and find it. So great, Race great fans, stuff. Make sure you support those who support yes, the racing absolutely. industry. absolutely. And go to your store and tell That's them right. they should have it Sage so that they fruit. can be on the app too. <laughs> yeah, there you have it. So great stuff. I am telling you, it was great stuff at the Speed Palace because when we got done, it was the Rudine Racing number 26 in Victory Lane, and he joins us now on the hotline. Corey Eliason is there. Hey, Corey, how are you? Uh, good. How are you guys? We are doing fantastic. Uh, tell us about winning at Port Royal Speedway and what it was like on Sunday afternoon. Um, it was, uh, I mean, it's been a long time coming. I've definitely, it's definitely one of my favorite places, and for a while I was terrible there. Yeah. So, um, you know, to finally be able to get a win is, is good for us, good for the team. It's a, you know, good momentum builder to head into kind of the outlaw swing until we get started with the All-Stars. Corey, of course, this is my home track, so I, I've got to ask, because I hear lots of guys say all the time, this is one of my favorite places to race. Why do you enjoy going there so much? Um, I think, I mean, the atmosphere, especially this weekend, the atmosphere was, you know, almost like Kings Royal or, you know, the Nationals. As many people as there was there the fans are into it um but you know steve and the track crew do amazing things out there the track was wide it was slick it was you know right against the fence very very thin curve to lean on or you were right around the bottom and very slow so um it creates a a different atmosphere out there on the racing track also as far as trying to be um i guess you have to be the adversity out there from one corner where you're Mach 10 to the next corner where you think you're about ready to stall the motor because you're going so slow. (laughs) That's good stuff. I love it. Well, since you mentioned the track, I personally want to know from a racer's perspective, obviously they've done a ton of work over the winter this year, putting in that new tunnel. They tore off all the clay, tore up the topsoil, did so much work and widen it. Was there a difference with the track this year. How is that front stretch? I know a lot of people were concerned with that new tunnel going in that maybe there'd be a dip there. What was the surface like for you for the first time being back on it? Um, I mean, it really wasn't that bad. There might be a little bit of a dip going into one, but I think it creates more excitement because now um, you can see there's a couple people that try to pull sliders going into one and you kind of hit the hole wrong and you kind of lose it. So you have to slow down a ton um, when you want to do it and you have to make sure you're going to do it right. and it just adds another bit of an excitement factor, I think, for the fans. So um, I'm I'm fine with it. I like it. That way you know um, it took a little bit of ease out of my mind that the 69 was not going to roll by me on the bottom in one or two just because I knew there was a little bit of a hole there. So at least I could stop worrying about that corner and just have to worry about three and four. Boy, I'm telling you what, that's what, I, and that's just a true <laughs> statement. If you can get those guys behind the curb on something, you need to you need to hang on to it. That is for sure. Corey, when I look back at the last uh, couple of months of your life, um, you've been all over the place. Uh, yes. Saw you down at Volusia Racing, of course, but then uh, spending time in Australia. How important is it for you and and uh, 
just to just to keep active, to keep racing. To there, were, there was no rust to knock off when you rolled into Port Royal. How important has that been for you as you continue to evolve, we evolve as a race car driver? Uh, it, it's very important. Um, you know, laps behind the wheel, laps on different racetracks, different surfaces with different cars is everything. You don't get comfortable. You don't you know get stagnant in your own ways of what you need to do. So um, I think I've I've definitely raced more in the off season. And coming to Florida and then having the break, I went back to Australia, raced again, and come back. Um, I'm going to say that helped. It, it kind of showed uh, right out of the gate, you know, at Lincoln or at Port. Um, I know it's kind of, you know, the what, second, third race for most people, if not their first one. And it, it just it shows different um, qualities as far as I don't have to think about anything. It's not getting back into the, the racing shape where you have to, you know, hold your breath or, or take a minute to think about what what you're doing out there. Um, you know, Australia was definitely good for me this year. I'd say for the most, we had a lot of really good runs. I've been in the top three, I think, 12 times out of the 16 nights we were down there. So um, to carry that momentum back over here and still be fast, it's, it's a confidence booster for myself, but it also helps boost the team morale and, you know, the team's confidence as far as, going into the outlaws the next weekend is you know we're, we're now racing with the best of the best and it's not going to be uh there's definitely no given opportunities there mm. there's no doubt about that and you've had a really you talked about australia a little bit volusia you were even up in par there and showing success as well and, and strength being this is the second year with tyler your crew chief how are you guys really meshing and, and how is that really going to help this season as well um it's definitely i mean Right when we come out in Volusia, we're, you know, we're kind of up front. We're fast. Um, it just makes it easier as, as far as now both of us, I think at least 90% of the racetracks we're going to this year, we have both been to now where last year it was half of it I've never seen and the other half he hasn't seen. So um, now we have a notebook and we are able to, you know, kind of lean on each other as far as when we discuss things, he knows what I want to feel or how I approach things. And now I know what he's going to do. So we just, you know, you learn the person that you're with and you learn how to talk to them and um, just keep things going back and forth as far as what we need and, you know, keep moving forward. And we have, you know, we have a great team. It's all young guys. Again, we have two other guys that really, you know, they all just gelled together and it's going to make it um, an easy, fun year, I think. Corey Eliasson, there's a guest here on Wing Nation. Corey, um, when I look at Volusia, uh, and, I, and I don't like talking to guys about bad moments, but I, I want to see how you deal with it because I'm telling you what, that night that you were rolling down the backstretch into three, getting ready to pass, I, and, and I, you, just, you had momentum, you had things going, and I don't know if you're going to win the race or not, but to have an engine failure like that, okay? How do you, how do you get over that? Do you, are you good at getting over it? I mean, I went back to my hotel and I kicked the refrigerator, and that was an hour later for, for you, okay? How do you get over a disappointing moment like that. Do you recover quickly to get on to the next race? Um, I mean, you. I definitely have somewhat let it go. I mean, I still, <laughs> everyone, you know, I, when I talk to people about winning, like they're like, oh, you finally won a Port Royal. That was where you wanted to win. I'm like, yeah, but still not a Gator. So um, I haven't fully let it go. Yeah. Um, it's it. That's one of those places where, you know, we get a race there at the beginning of the year and it's once a year. So, I don't know what it is. There's just something about that place that I really, really want to win at. So I would say it's not, it's more a drive than anything. I think there's definitely been more aggression driving wise just from that because it, you know, it's Volusia. So you get there once a year and then it's with the outlaws and yeah. you don't ever get a start, you know, eighth or something. And kind of, it's not easy just rolling forward, especially on a bigger racetrack like that with everybody else who's just as good, if not better. So, um, have I got over it? Absolutely not. It's still back there, but you know, you just kind of put it back there and just let it go for now and just try to, you know, you keep going on, but it's not, it's one of those things where I'm not going to be over it until we go back again next year. 
I respect the hell out of that because you get guys on there say, nah, an hour after the race, I was over it. And I'm like, well, that's not human, okay? <laughs> so I think I think yeah. uh, I, I get that, and I really right. – I, I, I respect that answer because, I, I mean, I, I just I felt for you. And then I saw your tweet about how bad you wanted a gator, and, and, and I understand that. That's a, that's a neat, neat place. That really, truly is. Uh, so you, I think you kind of alluded to it. Uh, real quick before we, before we need to catch a break here, World of Outlaws up until the All-Stars start, is that the plan going forward? Uh, yeah, so we'll go Texas, Arizona, and then the first two weeks of California. Then so right after Tulare, we'll head off and come back to uh, Attica for the All Star opener. Nice, outstanding stuff, Corey. Congratulations on the win at Port Royal and all the success. We're having a ball watching you drive that car, that Rudine Racing number twenty six. Thanks for joining us here on the show, and uh, good luck in Texas this weekend. Yep, thank you, and thank you guys for having me. There we go. Corey Eliasson joining us here on Wing Nation. Man, what a young stud he is as far as a race car driver. He has, and he has showed some speed this year. Yes, he has. It's been pretty impressive. And that maturity, that second year, that next time around the horn really, really helps him. You know, Hey, I'm excited about it because uh, here in the Carolinas, we start our kart racing. Millbridge starts tomorrow night. I'm all fired up about that. Mm -hmm. One of the things when you go out there, streeter super stands, okay, for the karting folks, the micro, they all have karting folks. Well, the streeter stuff, they're Hefner Racing product. Oh, cool. They build them up in Wisconsin up there, okay? Automatic lifts, rolling stands, stackers. They carry multiple carts. You know, just like sprint cars, HRP has tire racks, engine racks, bead uh, bead breakers, and everything else, a whole line of carting things, and you can find them on their website there. Yep, easy to shop. Entire line of Hefner Racing products, hrpracing.com. From desktop or right on your phone. First time online orders, check this out. Use the promo code Woo. MRN at checkout for 10% off your first order. Look at that. How about that? <laughs> Man, we're hooking you, you up. Deal. Hooking you up. A couple of news items. We're going to dial up Andy Forsberg here in just a moment, okay? A couple of news items. Zemco released their schedule. We talked about Logan Wagner. August, <laughs> Knoxville. The Zemco <laughs> cool. car is going back to Knoxville. I love that, Okay. Uh, speaking of going back racing, Shane Stewart has picked up a ride with Roth Motorsports. We've been wondering what's going on with Shane. It's been a little bit of a struggle trying to piece things together. It's not a full-blown deal, but he's going to run out in California for a while. And he's in good stuff. Oh, my God, I mean, he's in good let's stuff. Let's be honest. Oh, you kidding me? If there's the somebody junior. in California that you want to race yeah. with, that's the team. Absolutely. This just came across. A Dirt Vision. We've talked about our friends at Dirt Vision. Mm-hmm. Um, Williams Grove, all the races. And yesterday they announced Attica. Oh, my God. Friday night's in the hotel. <laughs> I'm just going to be, be busy oh, back and forth. You're going to need three a, devices I'm set up need, so you can watch it all. This is insane. <laughs> this is insane what Dirt Vision is doing to us, talking about the technology. And finally, in California, bacon is back. <laughs> Did you know this deal here? Okay, this is the King of the West NARC series. They have Sunny Valley Bacon. They're the, um, they sponsor the um, Dash. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they're back uh, Saturday night at Bakersfield. But here's what they do. Here's what they did, and they got into all kinds of trouble with their drivers. The driver would win the dash, and he would end up with a cooler full of bacon, mm-hmm. and he would take it to the crowd and give it to the crowd. Yeah, drivers and teams got hacked off. So why are we get right? <laughs> and so poor Jim Allen had to go back to Sunny Valley and say, "I need two for every race." So now they'd be running for the coolers of bacon again. The Sunny Valley bacon that is back. I love it, and I don't know. I see this thing building, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. What if they flew like Brady Bacon out there for oh, a show? Oh, I don't know. Hey, marketing people get together and just send me ten percent. It. It's fine. Or bacon, bacon, bacon. Fine. Send bacon. <laughs> send bacon. Sunny Valley Bacon. So good to see. Uh, King of the West starts off this coming weekend. Our birthday calendar for the Sprint Car Hall of Fame: Bob Crazener earlier this week, Troy Rutman, Johnny Rutherford coming up. William Windy McDonald thought about him all weekend long because we were out in Phoenix. He was the long time and spectacular voice of the famed Manzanita Speedway. Um, Ralph Capitani has a birthday coming up, Marion Robinson, uh, and uh, Danny Smith has a birthday coming up as well. Uh, Today would have been the birthday of Rex Mays, the inaugural class, 1990 winner of, or inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Rex Houston Mays Jr. was born in 1913 in Riverside, California. He was the 1940 and 41 AAA national champion. And one of the things we don't think about a lot is remember right after 1941 racing shut down yes so this guy in the prime of his career racing shut down for the war uh he won in four indianapolis polls really a class guy too in milwaukee a guy named duke dinsmore was thrown from his car uh rex was leading the race he spun the car and it went into the wall he jumped out of his car and drug 
the body of Dinsmore out of the way as the rest of the cars go by. So that's why they had the Rex Mays race. Ironically, in November of 1949 at Del Mar, uh, Delmore Fairgrounds, uh, he swerved to miss a crash car. He was thrown from his car and hit by another one. There's so many guys, 36 years old, so many guys in the history of our sprint car racing died racing. Yes, and, and young. And young, 36 years old. That's part of the history, and that is what is captured at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Great, great stuff out there in Knoxville, uh, Knoxville, uh, Iowa. And uh, again, uh, the Priority Aviation $20,000 Knoxville Nationals fundraiser is going on. And uh, just great stuff. SprintCarHOF.com. That's www.sprintcarhof.com. I want to also mention real quick before we get to Andy Forsberg, Plan B Sales, founded in 2010, uh, started with uh, Lionel and Chase Authentics uh, dealership, huge inventory, and uh, really, really neat stuff. If you need diecast, if you need any orders, uh, they also have exclusive stuff with Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and others. Use the promo code MRN for free shipping on orders over $20. Another deal. Another deal. We got you hooked up but i'm telling you about hooked up okay <laughs> when you want to talk about sprint cars hooked up in california all you need to do is call our next guest joining us on the hotline fresh off from a trip to victory lane on sunday night andy forsberg's on the line hello andy welcome back to wing nation hey guys thank you well dude i'm telling you i watched that race Sheesh. you were forward you were backward you 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 got a break on in a the re- air you were in the air you got a break on a restart i am telling you in a in one thirty lap race you had a little bit of everything out there <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was an entertaining race for sure. Petaluma always puts on a good race, in my opinion, especially when you get in a lot of traffic. But yeah, typically my plan is to just get out front and stay in front of everybody. But the start certainly didn't go my way. I, I kind of felt the start should have been called back, but regardless, I found myself in third at the flag stand, and at that point, it was you know Plan B. What do I got to do now? So, and the crummy thing about that restart was I hadn't done anything stupid the whole race. And the car was great, and then yeah, here I am in front of everybody in first place. Everybody's got their eyes on me, and I try tipping over. So yeah, it. Uh, I almost look like a complete idiot, but thank God somebody ran over somebody else, and the caution came out and totally saved my bacon. So no, that worked out good. Well, it you, you've fared well. I mean, it ended well. At least you didn't end up in the fence. But I mean, when I saw all four tires off the ground on that restart, I was like, holy Toledo. But you talked about that lap, lap traffic and, and just watching the highlights. It's pretty impressive, especially when it's very bottom dominant like it was. The way you maneuvered through that, I've just got to ask the process that goes through your mind when you're when you're dealing with that lap traffic. Because at one point I thought, you were going to eat it. You you pinched yourself between a guy and the front stretch wall, and I was like, this isn't going to end good. And you sneaked on by there. But is there is there a process that goes through your head when you see a guy coming up? Or you do you kind of think about how he races and knows how he races, and, and you try to set yourself up that way with him? Or is it just a matter of what's open and you got to take what you got? Yeah, I mean, there's most of it is you just kind of got to do what they're not. But, I mean, I've raced Petaluma enough to where I know what you can and cannot get away with there. And, I knew it was probably time to try it, but I wasn't ready to try it. But then I kind of felt like, I, in watching the video, I know now it was Sean Becker. I had this sixth sense that something was going on up there. I was kind of watching the tracks. When I would go around, I could see somebody was doing something up there, and I just felt like something was going to happen, so I better get up there and watching the video back. I mean, I was one turn, one lap away from Becker getting around me. So I got up and got in his way, and then once I got up there, I was like, well, this is pretty good up there. And, yeah, we chased Sam down relatively easy and got around him. So, And once I did that, I was like, well, I passed Sam up there. There's no problem passing the lappers. So the the rest of the race went really pretty smooth for me other than that restart, which uh, there really wasn't that big of a rut. I'm not sure what the heck I did to cause the car to do that, but uh, I used to go four-wheeled, like, jeeping with my dad back in the day, and the – the deal was as long as you keep your tires turning, you won't flip over or roll over in a Jeep. And obviously, you're only going four or five miles an hour doing the rock crawl and stuff. But that's my theory in the race car, too. If I get up in the air, I just floor it and hope it just, you know, calms back down. So that's what I did. I just pegged throttle, and it did go crazy a little bit, but it didn't tip over. So I kind of lived to race another lap. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. What you guys do is insane. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I'm flying through the air like that, if I'm flying through the air like that, I'm not flooring it. I'm on the floor, curled up in the <laughs> fetal position, I, which is which is just – that's why I marvel at you race car drivers and what you do. Hey, the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, uh, racing with those guys, the format, what they do and everything, what was that like for you at, at Merced and at, uh, and, and at Petaluma this weekend? And uh, just what was that like? You know, it's it's interesting because we're we're all about qualifying in California. That's yeah. all we do. So the two, well, it's a, it's a heat and a qualifier. I I just called it two heats. You know, that's intriguing to me. I know my my one sponsor that owns that motor. We don't have a personally have an ASCS motor. So for some reason, my autism awareness sponsor, Stephen Scott Vandenbricky, they love ASCS formats, and he bought this motor ten years ago when we thought ASCS was coming to California, and. Uh, it worked out good for me both nights. You know, it's it's a lot of luck, especially when there's that many cars. But, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I had some luck on my side all weekend both nights in either a heat race or a qualifier. I had people jump starts, so it moved me up a row, and I was able to capitalize on those points. And, you know, we were high point guy both nights, so, you know, it was it was kind of fun. We had we rolled out a new car, a new chassis that we'd never ran before, a new, new company we'd never ran before, so we were kind of wondering how we were going to fare with that and just, you know, the whole weekend went relatively smooth. It was kind of one of those, just I won't say fairy tale. Fairy tale would have been if we won both nights, but uh, we had a pretty solid run. So the, the whole F and F guys, they're they're pretty happy, and I am too. <laughs> yeah, as you should be. <laughs> and you've had a, a really good start to the year already. You picked up the the win a few weeks ago in, in the family car, and you're spreading yourself ag- across three different cars this year with 65 races amongst them all. It is. There are a lot. You talk about the new car. That's why I'm a little curious. Is it different cars amongst the three that you're driving when it comes to brands and, and who you're working with? Well, I was, I, I was a big ART guy. My, my personal car is a 2009 ART, so I'm going to ride that horse till it dies. Oh, my God. And uh, the, for F&F, we, uh, we had a couple different cars that we ran, but we always ended up going back to their ART. And uh, Placerville gives away a, a chassis. It's a it's an Eagle. I guess it's called a Helix. It's their version of the of the tr- of the Triple X. It's the car I guess they built in China. Hopefully, I'm right. I'm not really educated on what's going on there. <laughs> but we did win one the last two years. So we had two complete Helixes sitting there. And finally, Alan said, "You know what? We got to try running these cars." And uh, so they put their ART aside. And uh, so far, so good. I mean, you know, two nights we were relatively competitive. But yeah, like I said. Uh, my car is an 09 ART. Uh, knock on wood, it's never been worked on. And uh, I'm going to ride that horse till it dies. I joke that I'm never going to buy another car. When I crash my art, I'm going to retire. So um, <laughs> as long as I keep from crashing my stuff, I'm okay. Good. Uh, that's I hate, more power to you. A 2009 Chaz, 11 years, 11 years <laughs> old, that's for sure. Pretty old, yeah. Yeah, how about that? Uh, final final question for you. I went back through some of your Facebook stuff, and I, this goes back to, I think, Super Bowl Sunday. I saw your dog Mia. Is it, your dog Mia, correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, all in Super Bowl stuff. Now, is Mia uh, a football-only dog, or is Mia a racetrack dog also? Oh, no, she's a racetrack dog. She uh, she loves going for uh, rides on my 50. So if I fire that thing up, if she's in the pits and I fire my 50 up, she's looking for me. So she likes to take rides on the bike and go check out the track and uh, take rides with Dad. But uh, Mia's, uh, Mia's a daddy's girl. She, uh, she doesn't go anywhere unless Mom goes. So if Mom goes to the races, Mia gets to go to the races. But uh, we're looking forward to this weekend. We're going to be at Chico for two nights, take the motor home up there and have some fun at Troy Hennig's track. And hopefully we can repeat uh, another good weekend with the F&F guys. But, yeah, Mia, she's a... Uh, He's a spoiled little brat, I'll tell you that much. That's that's that's, that's the best way to have dogs. For. That's what they're meant for. <laughs> exactly. Unconditional love and spoiled rotten brats. All in one uh, all in one bundle of fur, that is for sure. Andy, it is always a treat to talk with you, especially after a win like you had on Sunday night. We appreciate the time and uh wish you the best of Chico this weekend and on throughout the course. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. You guys do great. There we go. Andy Forsberg joining us. And, uh, wow, great, great stuff. Really, really cool for Andy to to get that win. The 151st driver to win a national tour oh, race. Cool. How about that? Yeah, That's absolutely. Nice. And the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour is ongoing, okay? <laughs> and they really, uh, they had a great West Coast tour, okay? Arizona and California, I think the low car count was 46. They were low 50s for everything awesome. else, okay? Uh, next weekend, now they're off this weekend, the ASCS National Tour is. Next week, Friday and Saturday, 
Devil's Bowl in Mesquite, Texas. They're there with the Lone Star region. That is going to be great. The ASCS National Tour, as we talked about, they just wrapped up in uh, Washington. They're going to do their Midwest. They're going to Pennsylvania in May. Then Stuff. they're going out to Skagit and, uh, and Gray's Washington. Harbor. Yeah. Oh, what a deal they have. So the National Tour, really, really neat. Nine regional tours. They have six wing tours, three non-wing tours. You can find out more information at www.ascracing.com. That's ascracing.com. Good stuff, love isn't it. it? It's incredible what they're doing this year. It really is. I love what they're doing. I really do. I love what they're doing. That's for sure. You know, um, from citywide to countryside, wherever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value selection and industry leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. <laughs> Go to HerculesTire.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retailer location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. So so what we've learned is that you can find sage Apples. fruit and <laughs> tires. tires all on your phone. That's and right. the good stuff, too, the Hercules and the sage fruit stuff. <laughs> That is for sure. So, yeah, we love it. Um, coming up this uh, this week, we get to talk to Greg Wilson a little bit later yes. on. Yes, it's great. Always so, good catch up Neat, with neat Greg. stuff, that's for sure. That is going to do it for us here on Wing Nation. Okay, Wing Nation Apparel is available at www.wingnation.com, okay, or at the All-Star Circuit of Champions trailer that's right. at All-Star Races. So that's coming up at Attica. We are very, very active and busy on social media, Twitter and Facebook, and you got to check out our YouTube page, folks. I am telling you, there are more good stories on that YouTube always, page always. than anywhere on the World Wide Web. <laughs> so you need to check that out. That is for sure, and great, great stuff. Ashley, I appreciate you sitting in this hey, week. Hey, anytime. I love doing this. I know, it's rough talking it sprint is, car right? racing, especially with the guy that won Port Royal. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and then Andy Forsberg. If always you can't good. have a fun conversation with Andy Forsberg, you're not... You your problem. Pulse. That's your problem, that's for <laughs> sure. Coming up on Thursday, uh, Ashley will be back. We're going to talk to Ricky Warner, which is going to be really, really neat to see what Ricky Warner has going on. New crew chief for Tony Stewart and, of course, the Ford engine that they're working on and developing and racing. So can't wait to talk to Ricky and, and see how he's doing as well yes, as he's battling some sure stuff. Gonna... And then uh, Saturday coming up on Mav TV, we mentioned it, Greg Wilson going to join us. That is at 7.30 and 10.30, and that again is on Mav TV on Saturday morning. Always love when Greg Wilson, man, what a, a good dude. He just is a great, great guy, that's for sure. Thanks to Andy Forsberg and to Corey Eliason for joining us here this Wing week Nation on has Wing been Nation. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our string. Watch Wing Nation Saturday mornings on MAV TV. You can also find Wing Nation on wingnation.com or your favorite podcast provider. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.